Now notice the order again as you compare with Revelation 20 and Revelation 11. Verse 18, nations were angry that thy wrath has come, that makes sense. And look at this, and the what? Time of the dead that they should be judged. Compare that with Revelation 20. Is that accurate? Yes, after his wrath, at Revelation 20, verse 9, and Revelation 20, verse 10, after his wrath, what happens? Verse 11, and I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. See that? There's your answer. So notice that there's a time jump here at the seventh trumpet. From the seventh trumpet, we see right here God's the end of the millennium and the great white throne judgment. So let's call it GWT, all right? So great white throne judgment when his seventh trumpet sounds out. Now here's something that people don't get, all right? Unless you're a dispensationalist, you're going to get this. We believe in several judgments. A lot of people only think a final judgment and, a fi and one wrath and one, dispensationalist, uh, one dispensation and one salvation and one group of God. And you just get a pot full of mess. Amen. No, you have to divide. It's not one group. There are two groups, Israel and the church. No, it's not one wrath. There are several wraths right over here. No, it's not one dispensation. It can go to seven to eight. And it's not one salvation, it's dispensational salvations. Right. And it's not one judgment, there are several judgments. Amen. So right here, uh, do I have to go through these verses? Okay, I'll, no, I'm not, okay? You just have to take my word as is. If you don't believe me, then just watch my video on different judgments, okay? Because I don't have time. If I'm going to talk about the seven-headed dragon, I've got to skip this, so... So, all right, for a bunch of wham-wahs out there who are saying, ah, I don't believe you, blah, blah, blah. Okay, just watch my other videos on judgments. <laughs> There's a judgment of nations. There's a judgment seat of Christ. And there is a great white throne judgment. In this great white throne judgment, you'll notice right here what's... Because a lot of people, they, they're wondering this. Why is there a book of life at Revelation 20, verse 12? Because aren't all these people lost? Aren't all their names not in the book of life anyways? So a lot of people assume the great white throne judgment is only for lost souls. That's not true. You got to realize there is a saved group and there's a lost group. But then these independent fundamental Baptists, they don't have the foggiest idea. And they're like, well, but uh, uh, aren't, isn't, uh, isn't the judgment seat of Christ before the tribulation? See, that's why you have to believe in dispensational salvation. The judgment seat of Christ, even if you sin and mess up, according to 1 Corinthians 3, even if your works aren't that good, notice that you're, you're still saved out of the fire. You just lose your rewards. Yeah. But in the great white throne judgment, your works are being judged here. Right. And then he tests your name in the book of life if you're saved or lost. Look at verse 12. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. There's your book. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things, which were written in the books of what? According to their works. See, God has to check up with the book. If their name's in it, if their works match up to it. If the judgment seat of Christ is for Christians, then use common sense. Then that's where you can fit all the other saints for the great white throne judgment. Because we have taught, what is the Old Testament salvation? It is faith and works. What's tribulation salvation? Faith and works. What's a millennium salvation? It's a works system. If you want to drop the tribulation saints and Old Testament saints, you could probably do that too. But how are you going to account for the people who went through the millennium? Don't they have to be judged? Yeah, they have to be judged. And they're what? Works are judged. See? Dispensational salvation is a clear fact in Scripture that makes every scene, everything sense. Amen. Okay, now let's see if this matches up. Look at Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. Look how this mass matches up with the remaining dispensations. Look at your Bible, all right? 
Don't be like a tree full of owls. Look at your Bible, right? All right, don't go, uh, uh, no, I don't believe it. Shut up and look at the word, man. Amen. Man, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a roll today. All right, I'll calm down. I'll calm down, all right? I'm going to calm down, all right? Just people don't look at scripture. And they always accuse Bible believers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sick and tired of that, man. Just look at your Bible. All right, look at verse 18. Okay. That thou shouldest give reward unto what? Thy servants, the prophets, right? Remember, look at that word prophets throughout your Bible, like first, like first Peter, for example. When first Peter talks about the prophets testifying about the Messiah to come, that's referring to what time period? The Old Testament. Old Testament. There's Old Testament. And to the saints, okay, look up the word saints throughout the book of Revelation. That's referring to the tribulation saints, right? Amen. All right. And, and them that fear thy name, small and great. See that? So that's the remaining people, those who fear God's name, small and great. That's the millennium. Look at the book of Matthew chapter 5. That's the gospel of the kingdom. Remember? God's kingdom that he reigns. That's millennium. What does it talk about? It talks about fearing God. Look at the book of Isaiah 33, for example. When they see the king face to face, they have to be fearful of his wrath. They have to be afraid of him. That's why they're going to commit all these works. Why? Because it's a complete military dictatorship. Not, but not under a bad dictator. Amen. It's under a holy, righteous, good dictator. That's right. You know how you get a proper kingdom? Not by democracy. We already went by Laodicea democracy. It's a mess. Yeah. Now, ideally, obviously, we Christians are all about uh, individual liberty and freedom. And America was born with that principle through democracy. I get that. That does work, okay? But that's only from a, from a humanitarian perspective. The ideal, the most ideal perspective, if you go by humanitarian perspective, that's the best you're going to get. And guess what? Mankind becomes worse. Yeah. And the majority of the people, what? They want to vote out God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They want to kick out God. Yeah. The Bible-believing Christians are becoming the minority. So what happened to the rights of the people then? No, it's the rights of the majority, see? Yeah, yeah. That's what it's going to go by. So then, well, how you get the right proper government is complete military dictatorship, and you have no say against the matter, against a rulership that's pure and honest. That's how you do it. I don't trust me. You trust yourself, man. Or I want to have a right. I want to say something. Look how your freedom that God has proven throughout the past 6,000 years of history with your free will always mess things up. Yeah, right, brother. Yep. See? That's why God says, okay, enough's enough. Let's make it happily ever after. I'm going to make everything like this. We have to do this, all right? We have to do this, all right? Like church attendance is not free anymore. It's mandatory. Yeah, Nations have to travel, okay? You think driving's long enough? They have to travel to Jerusalem. God's going to say, okay, worshiping me is mandatory. You're going to travel all the way here. And if you don't, then I'm not, I'm not going to send rain on your nation. That's what he says at the book of Isaiah, man, Zechariah, etc. Man, see? That's how everyone's going to start living right, yeah. all right? Yeah. Yep. All right. So notice right here, and them that fear thy name. See, yeah, they're definitely going to fear his military dictatorship that time in the millennium. Small and great, see? Doesn't matter. Big people, small people, it's everybody. And shouldest what? Destroy them which destroy the earth. So God's going to destroy all the remaining lost people. Now, isn't it interesting what God referred to these lost people? He's going to destroy them which what? Destroy the earth. These aren't environmentalists then. These are destructionists. That's something you want to use on them. They're not saving the planet. You know what they're doing? They're destroying. They're not environmentalists. They're destroyers. Oh, no, we're, we're saving the earth. We're saving the earth. We're trying to rescue the earth. My friend, if you let sin continue, if you condone all these heresies, right. these different uh, blasphemous religions, and these uh, different sexual identifications and garbage like that, yeah. you are going to destroy this earth. Yeah, man. You're not saving this earth. Look at this world, man. Despite of how many tax dollars that they're stealing from you, trying to rescue Mother Earth, because they let mankind sin, sin is the issue why society messes up to begin with. Mm -hmm. Use your common sense. Why do people litter anyway? Because of sin. Yeah, 
See that? That's just common sense. Just because you preserve every water bottle, that's not going to stop sex trafficking, for example. Look at that, see? You're still going to destroy this earth. Why? Because of sin is the issue here. Sin's the issue. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Romans chapter 8. This whole creation groaneth and travaileth. Why? Because of sin. That's what's going on. This millions of abortions, see? You're destroying all of what God created. Amen. You're destroying the earth. Okay. All right. Show that to your environmentalist you hippie, okay? Revelation 20, verse 8. Tell them they're destroying the earth. And compare that with Romans 8, that their sin, while this hippie is smoking, you know, pot, marijuana, weed, or whatever, oh, yeah, oh. that you tell them that that's destroying the earth, all right? You tell them that. Like this one evangelist said, you want to save the trees? Eat a beaver then. Why are you preserving the beavers? You know, Hypocrisy, man. Hypocrisy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying go kill animals, all right? Calm down, all right? Don't be culturally sensitive on me, all right? Calm down, okay? All righty. Let's look at verse 19. Verse 19. All righty. Verse 18, yeah, it was a lot of... Uh, verse 14 through 18 was a lot of God hammering his justice. That's why. You know why? We're putting up enough of their garbage for too long. So that's why your pastor was kind of on a roll today. Okay, verse 19. Change of thought now. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. So God has a temple in heaven that's opening up. And there was seen in his temple the what? Ark of his testament. Ah, isn't that interesting? So a lot of people... They're wondering about the mystery of where is the Ark of the Covenant, right? So a lot of people are wondering, where is the Ark of the Covenant? So while people are wondering where the Ark of the Covenant is, the Bible already showed you the answer. Uh, where's the missing Ark? The mystery of the Ark. The Ark, my friend, is right over there. And uh, Revelation chapter 11, it got raptured up to heaven. So what happened is that when Jerusalem fell at the Babylonian captivity and Nebuchadnezzar and his soldiers were desecrating the temple and everything, God took his Ark of his Covenant and it's up in heaven. So you'll notice it's right up there. And there were lightnings and voices and thundering. So there's lightning going out, different voices sounding out, thundering sounding out, and an earthquake. Earthquake happening and great hail and hail. Man, when this Ark of the Covenant opens up in heaven, notice that all of this chaos and fire shoots out of everywhere. So what's going on? It looks like that at verse 18, that notice that God, he is cleansing all the earth, right? And verse 19, all of this destruction happens. Why? Because the earth is blowing up. And that's what happens at 2 Peter chapter 3. When you read 2 Peter 3, after the millennium, when God pours out his wrath on the nations, he makes all of, all of the world blow up, boom, like a cinder. And he starts a brand new again. 